When you came into this world, you came in with adhan and no salah. When you leave this world, you leave with salah and no adhan. And it's as if to say that your entire life is like the time between adhan and salah. And SubhanAllah, when you were in the womb of your mother, with the same stroke, the angel wrote your date of death and your lifespan. And so as you were coming into this world, you were already on your way out of it. And it is a profound reminder for us to constantly pray until we are prayed upon as we come into the short life and we leave the short life. Salatul Janazah is a right of the Muslim upon the Muslim. It is a way of us to bid farewell to our loved ones and to remind ourselves that we too will follow that same path one day. And the wise person is the one that puts their own janazah in front of them and lives their life in accordance with that Salatul Janazah. The Prophet ﷺ taught us to pray the janazah with a very unique formula. We go into Salatul Janazah and we read four takbirat. After the first takbir, we recite Surah Al Fatiha. After the second takbir, we recite salawat on the Prophet. ﷺ. The way that we would in Salah, Salah Ibrahimiyah, is a preferred way. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidun Majid until the end of the salawat in the prayer. And then you do the third takbir and you recite dua for the deceased. And one of the ways that is legislated from the Prophet Sallallahu is the dua, Allahumma ghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakarina wa unthana. Oh Allah, forgive our living ones, our dead ones, our present ones, our absent ones, our elderly ones, our young ones, our male ones, our female ones. Allahumma man ahyaytahu minna fa ahyihi ala al-Islam wa man tawafaytahu minna fa tawafahu ala al-Iman. O oh Allah, whoever you have decreed to live amongst us, then let them live upon faith. And whoever you have decreed to take from us, then let them die upon faith. So we make this dua that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to make, and then we make dua on the deceased in a heartfelt way, in a sincere way, in this short takbir to takbir. After the fourth takbir, you make dua for yourself, for the ummah. And if you'd like, you could even continue to make dua for the deceased, one of the ways that some of the scholars mention. Allahumma la tahrimna ajrahu wa la tudillana ba'da. Oh Allah, do not forbid us of the reward and do not let us go astray after him. And then there is a taslim, either one taslim or two taslims, which we'll talk about inshallah ta'ala in a minute. But I want us to just think about this. Why do we recite what we recite in Salat al-Janazah? And the scholars mention a few reasons. One of them is that if you pay attention, it is basically the salah shortened. The way you begin your salah is with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen with the Thana and then the Surah Al-Fatiha. The way you end your salah is with salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's one way that the scholars mention the reasoning for which we pray janazah in this way. Another thing that the scholars mention is that what are the ingredients of an accepted dua? An accepted dua has what? Hamd, praise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then it ends with salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Salatul Janazah has the perfect formula of dua by assuring that we have praise and that we have prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before we pray upon our loved ones and the Ummah as a whole. So you have that. And that's also why some of the scholars mention that there is one taslim according to some of the schools because it is not a complete salah. Now, obviously, if you're praying janazah behind someone, then you will do what they do, inshallah. So it's not a problem if they do one taslim or if they do two taslims. Now, I want to speak about janazah as a right of the Muslim on the Muslim, okay? Because this is a community right, and we often don't think of it that way. The Prophet ﷺ said the rights of the Muslim upon the Muslim are five. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to respond to the salam. And what did the Prophet ﷺ say is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment? that people only say salam to those that they know. Okay, so it's no longer a greeting between the Muslims. It's a greeting for the cliques amongst the Muslims. And so you neglect those. It's as if to say, if you don't have something added to your being a Muslim, then you don't deserve my salam. The second thing the Prophet Sallallahu said is visiting the sick. And I know that, you know, in the midst of a pandemic that becomes complicated, but in regular times, I want you to think about how neglected this sunnah is of visiting sick people, not because you have to, 
not because they're your family, not because you're, you know, you're expected to because of some closeness that they have to you, but just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going and visiting the sick and comforting them and making dua for them. That is a beautiful community practice that is one of the neglected sunnah, the neglected practices of our time. The third thing the Prophet Sallallahu said is following the janazah. Okay, so think of it in light of the previous two that I mentioned, that you pray janazah and you bury the person properly, that you attend the janazah and you follow the janazah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said that you accept their invitations. Who do we usually accept invitations from? Who do we usually invite, right? People of a certain class or people of a certain connection. The fifth thing the Prophet Sallallahu said that you respond to their sneeze. When someone sneezes and they say, Alhamdulillah, you say, Yarhamukallah, may Allah have mercy on you. So it is a right and it is not something that should be deemed only necessary when someone is significant. And even if you move away from the technical part of it, right? Salat al janazah is fard kifaya. It has to be done by someone. It's a communal obligation, not fard ain, not an obligation upon every individual. But do you notice the discrepancy sometimes between someone that was well known and someone that was not? Someone that has a large family in a community and someone that doesn't? Think about that narration of the Abyssinian woman that used to clean the masjid. And we always invoke her example about the virtue of cleaning the masjid, but let's look at it from another angle as well. The Prophet Sallallahu comes to the masjid and he notices this woman is missing right away. It wasn't like a month later. Right away, the Prophet Sallallahu says, where is this woman that used to clean the masjid? The Prophet Sallallahu missed her presence. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away last night. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, well, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you call me so I could come and pray the janazah upon her? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we didn't want to bother you. So we just did it ourselves. They carried out her ghusl. They prayed janazah upon her and they took her to the graveyard and it was an inconvenient time. So they said, we didn't want to bother you, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Sallallahu could have said, you know, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. I missed out. Instead, the Prophet ﷺ says, دلوني على قبرها. Take me to her grave. Take me to where you buried her. And they go out, they follow the Prophet ﷺ, and he prays janazah on her again. And he says وسلم, that these graves are chambers of darkness and they are lit up by my salah upon them. There is a beautiful lesson there that no one should be treated like they're too insignificant for Salat al-Janazah. And especially in a time when you have a lot of janazas, you see the discrepancy, right? You see the discrepancy. And if you move even beyond this idea that someone is insignificant, not worthy of you, just because they're your brother or sister in Islam, for you to make the effort to go pray janazah on them, then the second thing is your own individual incentive. Look how beautiful our deen is. It incentivizes things that we should do anyway. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who prays Salat al-Janazah has the reward of Uhud in good deeds. And the one who follows the Janazah has the reward of two Uhuds in good deeds. If you've ever seen Uhud, it's a huge mountain. And so if you think the person's too insignificant, then go for your own individual reward, your own incentive. And the third thing, Ibn Abbas عنه, when his son passed away, he said, I asked Quraib to go out and to look to see who gathered for the janazah. And Quraib came back and said, Alhamdulillah, it's a lot of people. Ibn Abbas said, Alhamdulillah, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that no Muslim dies and 40 people gather to pray janazah on that person, except that Allah would allow them to intercede on their behalf. So let's try to have large janazahs, sincere janazahs, because no one is insignificant, there is plenty of incentive and we can be intercessors for our brothers and sisters as we bid them farewell.